Oh, hey, hey, we're back. Yeah, and I've been reading through this pamphlet, The Successful God, and there's so much light, so much revelation and illumination coming off of this thing. Just had to have these shades on because I'm getting kind of blinded. Well, I'm getting blinded to the traditions and doctrines of men that don't make any sense, and I'm being illuminated to the light and the love of God. Well, hallelujah, we are back for The Successful God, part two. And we're going to pick up where we left off. We're reading this pamphlet from Dr. Stephen Jones, the great Doc Jones. And he lays it out here. He really spells it out that God is successful. God has a plan. And it's based off of his plan and his oath, who he is and what he has accomplished for the human race. Yes, man has a will and he makes choices. But what do you think is more powerful? God's plan, God's oath, God swearing to do something or man's will? Well, I'm going with God as the more powerful one. He is the victor. He's the savior of the world through Jesus Christ. So let's pick up where we left off. This is the successful God part two. We see then that all nations will worship God, sing praises to him, and will acknowledge his right to rule the earth. The day will come when they will all understand the truth and will come to recognize the righteousness of his laws and his ways. When God turns their hearts and wins their love and praise, then his oath will be fulfilled. Isaiah's prophecy. The prophet Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 45, 23, I have sworn by myself. Now God is swearing something here. This is God saying this. I have sworn by myself the word has gone forth from my mouth in righteousness and will not turn back. That to me every knee will bow, every tongue will swear allegiance. They will say to me, only in the Lord are righteousness and strength. And all who were angry at him shall be put to shame. The Apostle Paul quoted Isaiah with comments in Philippians 2, 9-11. Therefore also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Here's Paul's revelation. When Jesus returns the second time to rule the earth, the purpose of his reign is to subdue all of his enemies by the power of his love. So Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, 25 through 28, he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. And when all things are subjected to him, then the son himself also will be subjected to the one who subjected all things to him that God may be all in all. At the present time, of course, God is not yet all in all, however. I'm sorry, all in all. However, if we believe that he is able to fulfill his promises, then we are confident that he will succeed before the end of time. Hebrews 2, 8, and 9 says, You have put all things under his, Jesus' feet, for in subjecting all things to him, he left nothing that is not subject to him. But now we do not yet see all things subjected to him, but we see him crowned with glory and honor that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. Jesus has tasted death for everyone. His death, burial, and resurrection is a guarantee for everyone that they will ultimately be raised in newness of life. Do you see that? The Apostle Paul again writes in Colossians 1, 16 through 20. For by him were all things created, both in heaven, I'm sorry, both in the heavens and on earth. Let me start that again. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth. All things have been created by him and for him. For it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him and through him to reconcile all things to himself. Having made peace through the blood of his cross, through him I say whether things on earth or things in heaven. So, first Paul informs us that all things were created by him, whether they were in heaven or on earth. All that was created by him and for him. All was created by him and for him. 
Later, because of sin, Jesus was sent to die for the sin of the world in order to reconcile all things to himself, whether things on earth or things in heaven. The purpose for creation will be fulfilled, and this includes all of mankind. All nations will turn to him in the end. No one will be left out, for Paul says again in 1 Timothy 4, 9 through 11, it is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance, for it is for this we labor and strive. We have fixed our hope on the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of believers. Prescribe and teach these things. John's revelation. The Apostle John saw a vision of the end of history. Seeing Jesus as the Lamb of God who gave himself as the sacrifice for the sin of the world, he wrote in Revelation 5, 11 through 13, And I looked and behold the voice of many angels around the throne and the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And listen to this now. And every created thing, every created thing, which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all things in them, I heard saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. If you believe that God is able to bring all of humanity to the place where they all praise him and serve him, then God says, you are among the righteous ones along with Abraham himself. Paul says of him in Romans 4.21 that he was fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. Our faith, now here's this final statement you got to get here. Our faith is not in men, but in God's ability to keep his promises. That's the gospel, ladies and gentlemen. That's the good news. It is God, his son Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection. It is God's promise. It is God's swearing that every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It is God's oath. It is God's determination. It is God's plan. It's God's love. It's God's power. It's God who will be all in all. You can't stop it. I want to be part of it now. I know the Lord now and I've accepted him and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I'm not going to wait. But God has a plan for everyone and everything. Ultimately, there's been many people who have lived and died and not called on the name of the Lord. But guess what? God's got a plan for them too because God swore, he made an oath that unto him every knee would bow and every tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the true gospel. That is the true good news of our successful God.